welcome back and I've just arrived at the Ben Nevis Visitor Centre can't believe it I've been kicking this one around for years actually um, but uh, got a real good weather window although it's supposed to be pretty windy tonight but we'll have to just deal with it so yeah I wanted to take the opportunity and as I say I've kicked this round for a few years I've, I wanted to do a summit camp via CMD rep but uh, I also wanted to do it in sort of wintery snow conditions and um, I don't think it's wise all this gear carting it across the CMD rep I just don't think it's wise at all so I sort of changed my plans and decided I've never been up Ben Nevis before so I still think it's a, a nice one to do your first trip up Ben Nevis and the summit camp as well so this is my first outing since I, since I was ill. If you've watched my last video when I was on Skiddo, I got really ill in the night and uh, I just managed I just had to get home the next day and I was ill for, for quite a few days after. I didn't eat much, lost a bit of weight. Then towards the end of the week, it just turned into a cough and a really full nose and coughing stuff up and all that horrible stuff. But, uh, I've been in Scotland for a few days now so this is my first walk out since I was ill so I don't know how I'm going to feel prior to that I was absolutely feeling great but uh, been there before, we've been knocked back before and we'll just get up and uh, carry on again so we're not feeling 100% it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes me to get up there I've just read the sign at the visitor centre and they said when you get to the Lochan that's about halfway so however long it takes you to get to that double it for the summit time not in any rush, it's just interesting to see how long it takes I'm reckoning probably about four hours bit of filming looks like I've just weighed it 18 and a half kilograms yeah <laughs> must be bloody mad first walk back after being ill Ben Nevis summit camp ah. so find out if I'm uh, recovering or not won't we because I didn't want to get up here too early I'll tell you what that wind's picking up now I haven't brought my uh, anemometer for measuring the speed but that's 25 maybe 30 gusts that easy so, uh, I hope they haven't got the forecast wrong and they've predicted 30 and it's really 40 or 50 just have to deal with it Ugh. been going 15 minutes I've seen a few people wandering down but it seems pretty quiet for now hope you can hear me because of this wind but uh, I've just met some people coming back down and I asked them about conditions on the path and if he made it to the top and they said he didn't, he had to turn back because there's a bank a large bank of snow right across the path and it's all glazed over so sounds like I was right to bring the ice axe and crampons I was looking at people earlier wondering if they'd been up or not and thinking my god feel like a rat plonker with this ice axe and crampons doesn't look like they're necessary but maybe they are we shall see well here we are just at the uh, supposed halfway waypoint which is at 
the lock there i can't pronounce whatever that's called i'll put it on the screen but uh it's taken me one hour 10 minutes to get to there so if that's halfway i've been flying i'm uh i've met uh a new friend here so she's walk she's walking pretty quick so i might I might be dead by the time we get to the top uh but uh, yeah it's nice to meet someone and just uh have a chat as walking up got loads in common so it's really nice that right keep going So we're just 3.3 miles in now, there's a bit of snow here but there's nothing really. Fucking down on the uh, lock in there and uh, I'll tell you what, I'm starting to feel it now. It's this rucksack, all the steps that you're coming up, it's just every step you're lugging 20 kilos extra. I mean I'm alright but I am starting to feel it a bit. But we're making good pace. I reckon we'll be up there less than three hours. We'll see, we'll keep going. So we're just at 3,400 feet now. Look at the views. But I tell you what, when they said that the halfway point is that looking down there, it's absolute bollocks. Is that? It might be the halfway point in distance, but not in height gain. And this neck, this second half, if you want to call it that, is definitely a lot tougher. Maybe because you've already done the first half, but <laughs> yeah. So. What a day, what a day. See right across the sky out that way. And I know somewhere that's someone that's there now doing the cool and traverse. Right, we'll keep going. So we're getting a bit higher now and just starting to encounter these banks of snow. But you've got to be careful on because again, you know, this rucksack is it's pulling you back all the time, so you don't want to slip. But uh just seen one of the markers that takes you towards the summit there but what a day it is absolutely beautiful look at that so we just got to the final ascent now great view of the cornice on the top there but uh just been struggling a bit getting across the snow banks so what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to stick the crampons on now because pretty much all snow on this bit. I mean, it's doable, but again, with a heavy rucksack, I just don't want to slip. And uh, it's just making it a bit difficult. So the crampons will just give a bit more security on the foot. I think it's worth putting them on. Look at that. Wow, let's go. So we're on the final ascent to the summit now. Still can't see it, but I tell you what, I am absolutely knackered. I don't think I'm uh, anywhere near full fitness. And um, my voice has been going as well, probably because of the dry air. So the last, so after approximately three and a half hours, we made it. Cornish there. Just shows you've got to be really careful and keep away from that. You can't even see it until you're on it. Plenty of pitching spots. <laughs> Not too busy either.
do get dickheads even up here with beer bottles. They're everywhere, aren't they? Well, how awesome is this? Ben Nevis Summit all to myself. I'm just sat here in the uh, the shelter, just outside the shelter, but uh, the wind's coming from that way, so it's the only place I can get some shelter, really. There's no one else here at all. Just me and the Raven. Views. Then there's a little, is it a snow bunting, something like that? Notice that. Then looking across there to CMD. Couple of little buntings there. Yeah, but it's... I always wanted to do this. My, my original plan was to do Ben Nevis by the CMD Arette, as I mentioned. I mentioned that earlier, yeah. But just coming up that with all this winter gear, which you need for weather like this, you know, a heavy tent. So, no, I just didn't think it was sensible. Um, so I thought I'd just do the tourist route and uh, do a summit camp in winter conditions, which, which it is. It's probably about four or five foot of snow. Christ, that size of that raven. Bloody massive. Yeah, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna pitch my tent because I can't find any shelter. And the wind tonight is supposed to pick up 35, 35 mile an hour, which is not great at all. But we've got to deal with it, haven't we? And uh, it's just nice to have a rest. It took me three and a half hours to get up here, which I think, considering the conditions, I think that's fine. And considering I'm not feeling 100% either, yeah, I'm happy with that. And that 18 and a half kilogram rucksack. Ah, oh, this is great. It really is. So I've just made my blue, my new thermal cup going on and uh, I'm just going to have a walk down towards the CMD Aret end and have a look down there, I've not been down there yet. Let's, uh, let's go and check it out. Wow, fantastic views down this end. I've not brought my crampons though and my ice axe so I'm not going to, I'm not going to just wander across that just with my boots on, no chance. So I'll head back. Look at the views.
So I've had my brew and uh, had a sandwich, some biscuits. I'm just saying, I was watching the sun go down. It's bloody hell, it's amazing. I can see how I'm running right out in front of me. Then I can see sky, just everything. This window, bloody hell. The forecast was 30, getting up to 40 by tomorrow morning. So I'm not looking forward to that, but we'll just have to see what it is. The tent feels all right, as it always does. But it's just bloody noisy when you when you're in a tent in winds like that. Um, we'll have to just deal with it though. But uh, I can't complain. Really cannot complain. <laughs> Check the rough with the smooth, and this is just absolutely stunning. I've just got some uh, messages saying there's aurora alerts out tonight, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on that. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. All around it's just so clear and then up there blue skies they say when you get out of the tent it's nicely sheltered here but out there it's bitter absolutely bitter i don't know what the temperature is i've forgotten my uh, anemometer so i can't measure the wind speed i'm just going getting wind speeds off met office and they're saying 30 up to 40 so yeah it's not great that but it is what it is, but that wind is, I think the temperature is about zero. Anyway, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy this sunset. It's a hard life, isn't it? Worth all the effort though to get up here. And it was a bloody effort. I was, I was surprised, um, maybe because I'm not 100%, but I think I still did all right. I got up in three and a half hours. Uh, I had to put the crampons on at one point for all this snow and it's it's tough going, you're sinking into the snow so it is tough going in conditions like this but I think it'll do all right in three and a half hours considering the weight I was carrying. Right, I'm going to uh, just keep back and uh, keep my eye on this temp going away. <laughs> Enjoy this sunset. I'll see you in a bit. Temperature check. <sighs> well, it's just gone 11 o'clock now, 11 p.m. and uh, it's a beautiful night outside. Not that you'll be able to see anything, I'll show you. Probably not. Um, I've got a night lapse going on if it works and if the I mean, GoPros get blown over. It's bloody windy um, and freezing and just look at the temperature is minus 3.4 that's static temperature that's not wind chill so it's minus 3.4 here but um, I think I've had enough of winter now I just, I'm sick of freezing hands and dying GoPro batteries and all that I just I love winter but I've just had enough of it I think so I'm looking forward to uh, bit of warmer weather and a bit of easier camps <laughs> I do love it but hey these things come in cycles don't they so 
I'm due, uh, I'm due a bit easier time, I think, lugging all this heavy gear up here as well. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to some easier camps in summer. But, uh, yeah, so if this wind keeps up and it's supposed to keep up, I'm probably going to just get off pretty early tomorrow. I think the sunrise is about 6 a.m. Um, so I'll probably watch the sunrise and then start packing up and heading back down. It took me three and a half hours to get up here, so going down should be quicker. But saying that, there may be some ice patches, so and I have to be careful. Minus three overnight, so some of that snow may have frozen that I've trudged up through. It may be icy in the morning, so I just need to be careful. And then get back to the car and uh, head back to Aviemore. Right, so that's it. I'm going to call it a night, I think, here. There was mention of the Aurora, but uh, I've not got any apps or something. Someone mentioned it on uh, on Instagram, but uh, I can't see anything from here, so I don't know. I'll try and get a bit of sleep, but I would use it as sleeping bits. Nothing uh, consistent, really. Yeah, so that's it. I'll call it a night, and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. See ya. night on top of Britain's highest mountain I can tell you that wind is bloody hell it's giving us a rattle rattling and uh, it seems to, be, seems to be getting worse actually it started off in gusts but uh, it's pretty constant now and um, I've had hardly any sleep really that's what it's like which is like this for me anyway I don't know how people can sleep in this I don't use earplugs or anything I'm just get on with it. Said that I don't really sleep when it's not windy. <laughs> um, yeah, so just a matter of getting through it. Sunrise is about 6am, so I've set my alarm at 5.30, just in case I'm sort of dozing by then. And, uh, yeah, I watch the sunrise and then I think pretty soon after that I'm going to get off of here. Um, temperature is minus four, so this ground will cross to the uh, crampons on for the descent of the beer. Right, just thought I'd just give you an update on, uh, on how things are going. Back to you in a bit. Well, it's 3 a.m. now, and uh, these winds have picked up even more. I reckon there's 40 mile an hour winds easily. Saying that, it just dies off as soon as I start filming. But uh, yeah, I've been in 40 mile an hour winds before, and that's easy, easily 40 mile an hour winds. And um, it's just bloody noisy. The tent's moving around as well, but uh, I'm sure the tent will be fine. It's just. Uh, it's just not great conditions to be in really, it's just an endurance test to get through it until light and then we can get off of here. Yeah, so, just thought I'd update you. The direction hasn't changed, so I just sat here with the door open and it's blowing straight across us. But uh, not much fun to be honest.
so everything's packed away inside the tent now. Uh, just got to get this stuff in the rucksack and then I'll you know, start like taking the tent down. It's really windy though. That wind's really picking up, I think. So it's just a matter of getting everything packed away and getting off here. I'm going to get the crampons on as well for the descent. Certainly for the first stage across this snow. This wind is it's sort of buffeting you when you're walking around as well, it moves you. So with that rucksack on, it'll just be worse. The rucksack acts like a bit of a sail. And when it gets caught in the wind, it moves you around, so you've got to be careful. But, uh, still amazing, it really is. So a quick look outside. We've got the place to ourselves as well. A guy, a guy actually came up for the sunrise, an Australian lad. So he got up uh, just 15 minutes before the sunrise, so we enjoyed that together. Amazing experience, it was a great lad. He's gone back down now. That's, that's the only person I've seen so far this morning. Right, let's get his tent away. Phone's on, ready to get off, and uh, leave no trace as always. Ben Nevis, it's been an absolute pleasure, but it's time to get off of here now. Get back down. Okay, let's go.